Nice to see you again, Best of Trekkers! Today, we're going to look at the good and the not-so-good in TNG episodes on this edition of... Yeah, it's the best, but worst, but no one will be. Yeah, it's the best, but worst, but Trek's ever seen. After a 20-year hiatus from live action on the small screen, this became the Trek show I grew up on. To this day, much of it is still some of the best we've ever seen in Trek, with a smattering of some of the worst episodes as well. So let's take a look at the series with the widest best-to-worst range in the franchise. As usual, starting at fifth worst, Code of Honor. Some would say this is the worst episode of Trek, period. But if I'm being honest, it has something a few episodes of Trek don't. A start-to-finish plot without a ton of filler. Is it a good plot? No, but it gets a participation trophy for turning in a complete assignment. More than that, it's not even the most culturally appropriating or demoralizing episode in the franchise. The episode doesn't know the difference between antidotes and vaccines, or between a 13th century artifact and a 10th century artifact. It's also the only time a director was fired mid-production, and even the legendary Les Landau couldn't salvage this trash-tier hour of television. This episode sees TNG going three for three in terrible episodes in a row to kick off an amazing series. It boggles my mind that networks let the show continue long enough to get great after initial showings like this. Number four, Up the Long Ladder. This could have been merely passable as an episode had it only been about the clones from the second half. That bit still wasn't good, but it wasn't 26 minutes of a complete lack of plot, just letting Irish stereotypes run amok, with no leash and seemingly no script. At one point, we get Patrick Stewart talking out of character for the only time in Trek, seemingly just talking to Frakes about how ridiculous what's going on is, and it makes the final cut. Coming out of the episode, the only thing I still want to know? Did Brenna ever get her feet washed? Number three, The Naked Now. It's only episode two of a brand new series, and the wheels have already come off, along with some of the clothing. This is just a rewrite of TOS's The Naked Time, and while TNG generally improved on most of the aspects of TOS that make sci-fi great, this is so much worse than the insanity that had come more than 20 years before. Outside of Data's encounter at Yarpoint, none of the jokes or over-the-top nonsense connect like a shirtless Uncle George swashbuckling once did. What's supposed to be funny ends up cringy and begging you to change the channel, including some of the most unique noises Patrick Stewart makes in his acting career. <laughs> Number two, Manhunt. If you haven't noticed the pattern yet, all of TNG's worsts come out of its first two seasons. While season two improved slightly on season one, and has a pair of great episodes we'll talk about later, the second appearance of Loxana Troy does not improve in any way on her first. Nor does the appearance of famed rocker Mick Fleetwood as the fish-faced Antedian. Though we get the first look at the Gowron eyes, even if unattached from its normal Klingon body. The entire plot has Mrs. Troy sexually harassing every pseudo-available male on the crew, and even a holographic bartender. Even if you wave this off as a classic 80s unwanted love plot, it's basically a live-action episode of Pepe Le Pew where Loxana won't take no for an answer. There's no real Trek to speak of in this plot. It's just a bad time capsule of average television scripts of the era. And the worst episode of TNG at number one? Shades of Grey. This is barely even an episode of Trek. No one attached to it, save Diana Muldar, seems to think so either. Nobody put batteries in the medical tricorder. For the most part, no one's acting either. They just showed up, put on the costume, and said some words while the camera rolled. In particular, Jonathan Frake's surliness just seems to be him cracking bad jokes. Riker isn't anywhere to be found on set. While this is a product of the late 80s writer's strike, 
I recently saw a clip show from the same time in Night Court, and it actually works as an episode of television. You can do a clip show that's decent, but this just isn't it. The clips should tie into the minimal plot going on in parallel, but here the plot of Pulaski needing to save Riker's life isn't super interesting, and the clips are just there to highlight the most action-y stuff involving Riker that's happened in the series up to this point. Thankfully, this is at the end of a major shift in tone of the series, and Star Trek in general would never again see anything this bad. As we move into the best of TNG, if you're enjoying the content, please consider a like and subscribe. At fifth best, the measure of a man. Proving that TNG's early seasons aren't all bad, the show finally hits its stride with this dive into what defines personhood. It's amazing how some of Trek's best episodes have to do with exploring humanity through the lens of someone that's not human which also describes a hint of humanity in Picard when he re-hooks up with a past girlfriend slash prosecutor. But it really hits as Data shows more glimmers of civilized humanity than Maddox through the run of the episode, and even the antagonist in this situation gains some new insights and respect by the end. Thrown in here for good measure is Guinan's first major scene, where she makes Picard realize the possible repercussions of letting any life become property or an underclass. Number four, the offspring. Data's so fly for the whitest of guys, he's the main character focus of two amazing episodes in a row. Artificial life creating more artificial life is a really interesting plot point to explore. Unpacked, it shows us sides of Data we never see again as a father, even without emotions, he's proud of his daughter, even a bit envious of abilities she has that he can't master. The ahead of its time letting Lol pick their gender and appearance was a nice touch for that era of television. Lol shutting down at the end never fails to move me. And this just being part two of Measure of a Man's Quest of Synthetic Rights cements this as one of Trek's best. Number three, Q Who. This one just checks all all the boxes for a great Trek episode. Q, the Borg, mysterious Guinan backstory, and Picard admitting that humanity is flawed, but we're working on it. Without Q cluing the crew of the Enterprise in on the Borg, it's entirely possible that the Battle of Sector 001 in the next season would have gone a lot differently in favor of the Borg. It's Starfleet's wake-up call after three-quarters of a century of relative peace with only minor border skirmishes, as it expanded the Federation's sphere of influence with little serious threat from other major galactic powers. This one incident got the brass at Starfleet thinking and devising new tactics and ship designs to combat the threat. Thankfully for Sonia Gomez, she'd move on to more than just the young officer that sent Picard to the dry cleaner. Number two, All Good Things. One of Trek's best finales, and there's no wonder why. It bookends the series dealing with Q and gives us a look at an alternate future for our favorite main characters, of which some turns out to be true in the Prime universe. A past-present-future routine really pulls together everything we've come to know and expect from TNG over seven seasons really nicely, bringing back familiar faces while doing the best version of a trope Trek has become famous for, a higher being testing humanity. Picard as a character has come a long way since taking command of the D seven years before, and that's brought home as he finally joins the now ubiquitous executive poker game. Jordy's got some work to do adding that third nacelle to the salvaged Enterprise D. And TNG's best episodes at number one? The best of both worlds. The two-parter that brought Picard around to being more human at the expense of becoming a Borg for a minute and having to live with that experience. As the Borg set their sights on Earth and seemingly Captain Picard for being an exemplary version of humanity or something, it provides the stage for all of our main cast members to play major parts through tense moments and probably the best cliffhanger at the end of a season in all of television history. 
At the end of Season 3, you didn't know if they were going to kill off Picard as Riker gives the order to fire Fade to Black to be continued. I don't think there's a more Star Trek plotline than losing your humanity to help the rigid, by-the-book guy realize there's more to the galaxy. What's your favorite episode of TNG?